Welcome everyone on this unique day of opportunity where it is the first full day of the Rosicrucian New Year and the natural new year as spring, as well as the new moon at 5.23 p.m. today, mountain time. This is a perfect time for new beginnings, to begin new journeys, ventures, decisions, changes, a time of new growth and rebirth. The exercise demonstrated by the Grand Master yesterday is an excellent way to establish your vision and plan for this new Rosicrucian year. My message today is be the spiritual leader. We have all witnessed famous spiritual leaders that have sometimes transformed humanity. But what about those spiritual leaders amongst us that change humanity one moment, one person at a time, simply by doing the right thing or being the best they can be. We have all personally had those spiritual leaders at some moment in our lives. Maybe we are all spiritual leaders simply by practicing our Rosicrucian principles, acting in service to others, or simply by leading by example. Today, I will briefly share some of the ways on how each of us individually can be the spiritual leader of our family, our friends, or of humanity using fundamental Rosicrucian principles or being the hermetic or catalytic archetypes in our daily lives. First, let's start off with the basic question. What is spiritual leadership? I personally feel that spiritual leadership comes in many different forms, depending on the situation or personal views. And of course, I couldn't resist asking the most knowledgeable entity on our planet. Spiritual leadership is a form of leadership that is driven by a deep sense of meaning, purpose, and connection. It is a holistic approach to guiding and influencing others that integrates personal values, beliefs, and ethics into decision-making and action. As our world becomes increasingly complex and interconnected, the need for leaders who possess a strong sense of spirituality and inner wisdom become more apparent. This was actually generated by OpenAI GPT 3.5. Keep in mind, this wasn't just a simple Google search, but it took it about a minute to write this uh, based on seven over seven billion data points using true artificial intelligence, but no spiritual connection. That all being said, I actually agreed with the AI response. So here it is today. <laughs> so now let's look at some of the ways we can all be spiritual leaders in our lives. First, let me share a collection of what I found as common traits of good spiritual leaders. These people are always encouraging and inspirational to whomever they interact with. They also know themselves usually very well, both personally and spiritually. They tend to know their motivations, strengths, as well as their weaknesses. They act and speak with humility, empathy, and compassion. They have a connectiveness to all those around them, or maybe to many people, or to the divine cosmic all. They are what I would call a love and peace consciousness. 
they think about how their actions and words affect other people. They go beyond just believing to knowing and trusting in what they stand for. And when amongst others, they are an example, not just by words, but by action and doing. Another characteristic is a focus on others and generosity, sometimes even at the expense of themselves personally. And finally, in service. It becomes natural rather than a duty or responsibility. This list could go on and on because it really is a holistic approach and every individual brings something to the table of life. How many of you have had these type of people in your life at one point or another? Maybe this person was a leader in your church, synagogue, or other religious organization. Maybe it was your lodge master or your grandmaster. Maybe simply a parent, sibling, or a close friend. Maybe as you were growing up, it was a teacher or someone that was your mentor in life. Now I ask, have you or are you in a place personally with some or all of these traits within yourself? I suggest because I've met many of you in person that I know many or even all of you have many or all of these traits at various points in your life. In your family, amongst your friends, at your affiliated body, in society, or in your meditations. You are a spiritual leader if you choose. Maybe your father, mother, or sibling is or was your spiritual leader. This can sometimes be overlooked or underappreciated. This can be as simple or as important as simply being there when you need guidance or by sharing stories of what they've learned or experienced in life or by showing you the power of prayer, meditation, or compassion. How about empowering you to explore and grow to be the most you can be? All of these are examples of what spiritual leaders do. Have you personally done these types of actions to support your children, family, or your friends in times of need? I think so. This really is the, the area of influence for all of us. It includes members of your direct family, your friends, your coworkers, your neighborhood, and more related to our Rosicrucian brothers and sisters when it comes to sharing ideas, maybe. How about when you were asked to serve in your local affiliated body? Or way beyond influencing your city, state, country, or even the entire world through supporting causes that you believe in or volunteer for. Being a spiritual leader can be easier than you imagine. Be yourself and use your Rosicrucian principles to be the spiritual leader. We have so many tools and resources that we have seen in our monographs, presentations, and publications. And of course, you have the master within. Knowing that you are one with everything, everywhere, all at once, all now. The only limit is the one that you create or the ones that are created by fear. Accept your potential and be the spiritual leader.
every day, every moment, in many different ways. Let me share some amazing Rosicrucian principles that will directly allow you to be not only a good person, but also a good spiritual example or leader. Know thyself. This is one of the most important principles. Everything starts with you. Be conscious in thought, word, and action. This principle is the foundation for all mystics and can make the world a better place just by this foundation. Everything is changing and change is continuous. If you can move your consciousness to understand this principle, it will allow you to have things or even experience in detachment, knowing that things cannot and will not stay the same. And thus by releasing, will allow you to move towards the future, opportunities or new possibilities without reservation. Avoid extremes or imbalance. This idea allows you to be in a place to see the lows and highs, goods and bads, intemperance, where you can move towards your happiness and live in a state of peace profound. The state of mind is where you are living in harmony with the cosmic, with a warm glow of contentment throughout your whole being. Where you are able to face all changing conditions with a philosophic and detached attitude. Now, that doesn't mean you don't care, but instead acknowledge each moment for what it is and, con and consciously think, act, or speak if it is constructive or necessary. The law of compensation. This fundamental law not only explains karma over many lifetimes, but also can explain why things happen in your current lifetime. And even why people are all in different places in their life and experiences. As you give, so shall you receive. This energy, energy exchange law involves the law of compensation and the law of action and reaction, as well as the principles of Amra. All of these fundamentals are easy to say, but challenging to live and require conscious practice daily until it is natural behavior. Understand these fundamentals and you will be a natural spiritual leader. We have so many Rosicrucian resources that also support these basic principles and humanity as a whole. Take just some of these examples beyond our monographs, of course, where we have the Declaration of Human Duties, where this is a focus on respect, integrity, nonviolence, being a citizen of the world and human in humanitarianism. The Rosicrucian Code of Life that calls out duty, daily rituals, gratitude, humility, sharing, giving without compassion or compensation rather, repeating no slander, telling no lies, judging not, and being moderate in all desires. We have the Rosicrucian ethics, 
were patience, confidence, temperance, tolerance, detachment, generosity, courage, nonviolence, and benevolence are addressed. We have the Rosicrucian ontology in the 12 major laws where the fundamental principles are spelled out. The Council of Solus, where we all come together to help humanity and the entire planet and all living beings upon it. The message of peace, where we acknowledge that our actions, thoughts, and words have a direct impact on peace and harmony. The manifestos, where we call for service to humanity and the environment. All of these resources are available to us. And then we have the unspoken or unseen spiritual leadership actions. Knowing thyself, and I feel this is the most important, not that we're like ever done, but we are always reminded to start with ourselves so that we can be of more help to others and the world. Union with your master within. Prayer and meditation. Silence, thought, and contemplation. Union as one with the all. Council of Solace and union with the Rosicrucian egregore. Actions without personal credit or recognition in service without expectation. I met a very special person briefly in the airport back in 2014. And this person I've already, I've, I've always felt like I spent a lot of time with them, even though I'd never met him in person. And he once said about spiritual leadership, only when we have good self-awareness can we have good self-mastery. And only when we understand our master, ourselves, can we understand and lead others. And only when we can lead others can we understand and lead the culture we are responsible for? Lead yourself, lead your people, lead your organization. And I personally would add, lead your friends, lead your family to possibilities of enlightenment. Does anyone know this Rosicrucian that I speak of by his action? Or word? Hmm. This is one of the things the Dalai Lama said about leadership. And when I read it for the first time, I thought a Rosicrucian wrote it. And then I saw his name to it. And I realized how significant his message was not that this is his only message, but once again, a person of wisdom. And once again, I think this is a universal truth. Another wise person and Sufi mystic once said, when dealing with people, inspiration, motivation, and growth, raise your words, not your voice. It is the rain that grows flowers, not thunder. Of course, that was Rumi. And maybe in life, there are times when we are frustrated and just trying to make something happen as a leader where we may not be fully conscious. We've all been there. 
and whether it be in our thoughts, words, or actions. And remember, the only mistakes in life are the ones that we do not learn from. I suggest you heed this wisdom in your leadership role at work, home, as it demonstrates patience, tolerance, and temperance. Spiritual leadership and life in general is in thought, action, and word. As Rosicrucians, we're always reminded to be conscious in thought, action, and word. But not just one of these, but all of these. As many of you know, I'm an avid practitioner of the Kabbalah, Tree of Life, and the Tarot. So let me introduce some, some very practical hermetic correspondences when it comes to you being the spiritual leader. Many of you have had some exposure to the Kabbalah and Tree of Life. But let me share how this esoteric tool is very practical, and especially when it comes to being a spiritual leader. Every day in your daily life, at home or at work or wherever, there is a time to be in hod as the mental leader. There is a time to be a netzach as the nurturing leader. There is a time to be in tefret, in complete harmony and light. Yes, there are those times when we need to be in bina or hachma as the archetypal supernal mother or father. There is a time to be a Malkut of taking care of business in the material realm. There is a time for mercy. There is a time for severity. And of course, there's always time and a place for balance and harmony. The Kabbalah and Tree of Life can be used like any other esoteric tool if you make it part of your holistic practice as the spiritual leader. Because at the end of the day, or in this case, I would say at the beginning of every day, a good spiritual leader is the tree of life. Being where they need to be in many varying situations. Sometimes as a spiritual leader, we are a teacher. In this case, I present the archetype or tarot key of the Hierophant, where you may be outwardly sharing the Rosicrucian principles and wisdom amongst friends, family, coworkers, or maybe facilitating presentations, workshops, or discussions, or teaching young people. Teaching young people can come in many different ways, like formal instruction, sharing, reading a story or a book, or just being the pillar of wisdom for a young person's life. And most importantly, knowing that you do not know everything. Sometimes as a spiritual leader, we're the nurturing mother. In this case, I present the archetype or the tarot key of the empress. She is so connected with Venus, fertility, and nurturing, where she is in full compassion without expectation. She is nurturing as a service and in love. Just being in oneness with nature and the divine cosmic. 
being present, just to simply listen without judgment. Sometimes as a spiritual leader, we're the wisdom storyteller. In this case, I present the archetype or tarot key of the high priestess. She is associated with Luna or the moon, intuition, memories, and wisdom. Maybe leading and sharing through parables and storytelling rather than telling others how to act. She uses intuition to know when to intervene, speak, or act. She speaks to the subconscious rather than the mental, possibly in the form of communicating from your master within to another person's master within. Knowing when to speak the truth or when to let the lesson unfold as the supernal mother or astrological Saturn, Bina, mother. Sometimes as a spiritual leader, it is best if we use few words and let our light speak for itself for those who are ready. In this case, I present the archetype or tarot key of the hermit. This should not be confused with hiding from spiritual leadership in a cave, but instead going about your great work every day and allowing those who have their eyes and heart open see your message of light in action. Sometimes as a spiritual leader, we must step into full focus, concentration, and clarity of word and thought. And as one with the cosmic, working in divine alignment as a conduit of light to make things happen. Whether in the spiritual, mental, or physical realm, as above, so below. In this case, I present the archetype or tarot key of the magician. He or she is associated with Hermes, Thoth, Mercury, and communication. In, con in, in a continuous attunement with the cosmic, being a channel for the divine with a focus on service in full trust and confidence, knowing and living in alignment with natural law every day. This is where the real work of being the master in all realms, on all levels, within and externally, to make things happen, to make magic happen, knowing that we are but a conduits of a higher divine will and purpose. And finally, in this small sample of spiritual leaders of the Tarot, I share the ultimate spiritual leader, the master within, and each person's individual personal soul and part of the universal soul. A journey of the soul through many lifetimes in, in the experience of karmic balance and in alignment with the law of compensation. The fool is a free spirit, innocent and pure. Life without fears, limits, and boundaries. Living in true liberty of light life, and love without fear or reservation. We, all, we always still have that little dog, our best friend, of course, and the symbolic, uh, symbolic of consciousness that sometimes tries to uh, bark its way 
uh, or in the in in some cases bark its fears and control of our hearts. But down inside, we know that being as one with the all, anything and everything is possible. The full archetype is actually very wise, but may appear as foolish to others when others are not ready to see that personal liberty within is a key to personal and spiritual progress, union, and peace profound. Many see this freedom to explore and grow without fear, limits, and boundaries as an example of spiritual leadership. Without words, without judgment, without attachment, without expectations, only the lessons of life and what they bring. Are you ready to be free? Without concern of what other, others think of you. And let those who are ready to see what is infinitely possible. Then I would suggest be yourself, follow your heart, higher consciousness, and the master within. In summary, and I close with some gems to take away. Ask yourself daily, what do you bring to the table of blessings? Focus on knowing yourself, and you will be of more help, not only to yourself, but to the entire planet. Be yourself and do what you enjoy. There is a great Rosicrucian Digest article from 1959 about how important it is to be yourself. It removes so much stress. Never show up empty-handed. Always ask, what can you bring to the table of an event, your affiliated body, your family, and your friends, and humanity? And it can be as simple as moral support, a peaceful state of mind, or a smile. Share with humility and know that you do not know everything. You're not always right. Basically, you're imperfect, but a work in progress, just like everyone else. It's okay to say, I do not know, or when you're incorrect, or when you make a mistake, quote unquote. You learn from the experience and move forward without guilt, only conscious action and thought going forward. Let others around you know this fact about yourself up front so realistic expectations are established. And most importantly, always contribute to the whole. Be the spiritual leader. This role is not to fix people, but to inspire possibilities and potential. Everyone needs help, friendship, and guidance. Everyone is in a different place, not in judgment, but in acceptance. Only share constructive words. And you personally have so much to offer and share. You do not need to know everything, and you will make errors. No that you are not the guru and you are a student of continuous growth. Spiritual leaders prioritize self-reflection and mindfulness. Understand the importance of taking time to reflect on your own thoughts and feelings and to be mindful of one's actions and interactions with others. One of the key benefits of of being the spiritual leader is that it can help others feel more fulfilled and satisfied in life, thus contributing to the whole. By emphasizing personal growth, purpose, ethical behavior, social responsibility, you will be the spiritual leader and you can create the environment that is more meaningful and fulfilling for those you influence or interact with daily 
and the world as a whole. Being the spiritual leader can be easier than you imagine. Just use your Rosicrucian principles to be the spiritual leader in your family, circle of friends, coworkers, your affiliated body, your community, and the world. So mode of peace.